It is currently Saturday, November 22, 2025. The market is closed. Navitas Semiconductor, trading under the ticker NVTS, ended the last trading session at exactly $7.56 per share. While a cursory glance at the closing board might suggest a relatively flat finish with a marginal gain of roughly 0.1%, the intraday action tells a far more violent and significant story that you need to understand if you are holding this position or watching it from the sidelines. The stock opened at $7.45 and immediately faced heavy selling pressure, collapsing to a session low of $6.85, before aggressive buyers stepped in to bid the price back up, effectively reclaiming the $7.50 level and closing near the highs of the day. This type of intraday reversal, a hammer candle formation on the technical charts, often signals a potential capitulation bottom, where weak hands have been fleshed out and institutional money is beginning to defend a specific price floor. In this case, that floor appears to be heavily influenced by the recent $100 million private placement, priced at $6.75, which acts as a psychological line in the sand for investors. When you look at a stock like Navitas, the expectation from the retail crowd, perhaps those trading casually on a Robinhood app or checking their SoFi Invest dashboard, is often that a semiconductor company in 2025 should be flying high simply because it is adjacent to the artificial intelligence boom. The prevailing narrative is that anything touching chips or power management should be drafting behind the massive momentum of NVIDIA stock. However, the reality for Navitas is starkly different and far more nuanced. The company is currently undergoing a painful, self-inflicted surgical procedure that management calls Navitas 2.0, and this transition has created a massive disconnect between the company's current financial ugliness and its potential future dominance. The reality is that Navitas is not soaring on the AI wave right now. It is currently drowning in a revenue trough that they dug themselves in order to build a stronger foundation for 2026. If you are looking at this through the lens of a standard Schwab Intelligent Portfolios algorithm, the stock looks like a disaster, falling revenue, widening losses, and high cash burn. But if you look closer, you realize that the collapse in revenue is a deliberate strategic exit from low-margin, commoditized markets to clear the way for high-performance data center dominance. This tension between the ugly present and the potentially explosive future is where the opportunity and the extreme risk lives. To understand why the stock is behaving this way, we have to analyze the recent earnings disaster that caused the stock to plunge initially. In the third quarter of 2025, Navitas reported revenue of just $10.1 million, which missed expectations and represented a massive year-over-year -year decline. Even worse, their guidance for the fourth quarter is approximately $7 million. For a publicly traded semiconductor company, $7 million in quarterly revenue is terrifyingly low. This is the point where most investors on interactive brokers or those managing their own individual brokerage accounts might hit the sell button. But you have to ask why the revenue collapsed. Navitas management has made the aggressive decision to stop chasing revenue in the low-margin China mobile and consumer charging market. They're essentially firing their bad customers. They are walking away from the easy money of selling chips for phone chargers to focus entirely on the high-stakes, high-margin world of AI data centers, electric vehicle grid infrastructure, and industrial power. They are sacrificing the present to save the future. This is a classic kitchen sink quarter where the company airs out all its bad news at once, hoping to reset the baseline. This brings us to the technology itself, which is the only reason anyone pays attention to this stock. Navitas is a pure play on gallium mitride, or GAN, and increasingly silicon carbide, or SIC. Unlike the legacy silicon chips that have powered our devices for decades, the kind you might find in older Apple stock hardware or traditional appliances, GAN technology allows for power systems that are smaller, lighter, and significantly more efficient.
In the context of AI, this is critical. AI data centers are power-hungry beasts. They generate immense amounts of heat and consume gigawatts of electricity. Traditional silicon power converters are reaching their physical limits in terms of thermal management. GAN allows these data centers to run cooler and pack more processing power into the same rack space. This is why the recent partnership with Global Foundries is so critical. By partnering with a major U.S. foundry, Navitas is securing a supply chain that is shielded from some of the geopolitical tensions involving Taiwan and China, making them a more attractive partner for U.S.-based tech giants. If you believe that AI data centers will continue to scale, you have to believe that power efficiency becomes the single biggest bottleneck, and Nabatos is positioning itself to be the corkscrew that opens that bottleneck. However, we must address the financial elephant in the room. Cash burn. The company ended the quarter with about $150 million in cash, which sounds like a lot until you realize they're burning through it to fund R&D and operations while their revenue has temporarily evaporated. This is why the recent capital raise was necessary. They raised $100 million by selling shares at $6.75 to institutional investors. While this diluted existing shareholders, a painful pill to swallow for anyone holding the stock from higher levels, it also removed the immediate bankruptcy risk. It gave the company a runway to get through 2026. When you see the stock bouncing off $6.85 as it did in the last session, you're seeing the market respect that $6.75 level. Institutional investors who bought the offering are not likely to let the stock crater significantly below their entry price without a fight. This creates a unique setup where the downside might be somewhat defined by the deal price, while the upside depends entirely on execution. Let's talk about the broader market environment. We are seeing a divergence in how retail and institutional investors approach this. Retail traders using Robinhood crypto accounts or engaging in Robinhood stock trading often look for quick momentum. They see the chart moving down and assume the trend will continue. In contrast, institutional investors using Fidelity Wealth Management Services or Advanced Interactive Brokers trading platforms are looking at the enterprise value to revenue multi for 2027, not 2025. They're betting that if Navitas captures even a small fraction of the power management market for the next generation of NVIDIA AI racks, that $7 million in quarterly revenue could scale to $70 million or $100 million very quickly. The 800-volt architecture that is becoming the standard for electric vehicles, pioneered by companies like Tesla, also requires the kind of high-voltage reliability that Navitas is trying to prove they can deliver with their Genesic acquisition. It is also vital to consider the short interest. A stock that has fallen this much often attracts short sellers looking to profit from a total collapse. However, with the $100 million cash infusion, the bankruptcy thesis is largely off the table for the next 12 to 18 months. This creates a dangerous environment for bears. If Nabitas announces a single major design win with a hyperscaler, Amazon AWS, Google Cloud, or Azure, the stock could rip higher in a massive short squeeze. We have seen similar mechanics in other beaten down tech stocks. This is high beta, high risk poker. If you are the type of person who prefers the safety of Fidelity mutual funds or Fidelity ETFs, this stock is likely too volatile for your stock. This is for the speculative portion of the portfolio, the part of your online investing strategy allocated to venture capital style risks in public markets. Comment below how many shares of Navitas you currently hold or if you are waiting for the price to break a specific level before entering. Do you think the Navitas 2.0 pivot is a brilliant strategic move or a desperate attempt to save a sinking ship? I want to hear your take on the management's credibility. Moving deeper into the Navitas 2.0 strategy, we need to discuss the timeline. 
management has indicated that the revenue trough will persist through the fourth quarter of 2025, with the recovery starting in the first half of 2026. This requires patience, a trait that is in short supply in modern markets. The shift away from the China mobile market is significant because that market was a race to the bottom. There are dozens of domestic Chinese competitors making cheap GAN chargers for phones. Navitas could not compete on price there and maintain healthy margins. By exiting, they are admitting defeat in the commodity war to focus entirely on the high-stakes, high-margin world of server power supplies, onboard chargers for EVs, solar inverters, and industrial motors. Motor drives. They are protecting margins, but this also lengthens the sales cycle. A phone charger design cycle is six months. A data center or EV design cycle can be two to three years. Investors are currently stuck in that waiting period, paying for the R&D today for revenue that won't arrive for another year. The partnership with Global Foundries is also a hedge against geopolitical risk. Many investors worry about supply chain concentrations in Asia. By having a U.S. manufacturer